So, a uh, very good afternoon to the chairpersons and all the eminent uh, uh, members of the society and all the lovely audience of SNAC 2022. This, uh, I thank the organizers for inviting me for this wonderful conference, which has been going very timely since morning. And I'm here to present on the scalp now blog, how I do it. So I bring greetings from All India Institute of Medical Science, New Delhi. And I just begin with my topic. See, scalp uh, is, has got an abundant nerve supply, which has got many nerves right from, uh, the almost six to seven nerves on each side, uh, which are the branches from trigeminal nerve and cervical spinal nerves, which supply the scalp. To, if you see from the anterior part of the scalp is supplied by supraorbital, supratrochlear, zygomaticotemporal, auriculotemporal, which all are the branches of trigeminal nerve, and the posterior aspect by the greater, greater occipital, less occipital, and small area behind the pinna by the great auricular nerve branch, which are the branches of the dorsal rami of the cervical spina. <clears throat> so all these nerves uh, supply the scalp either side. So they are almost six uh, on each side. <clears throat> so and blocking this nerve is actually the scalp block. So there are various techniques like scalp infiltration, where you infiltrate the local uh, anesthesia uh, uh, and give uh, uh, local anesthesia infiltration to the scalp, or you can block the individual nerve. So individualized target nerve blocks of the scalp, which is actually called the scalp nerve block. Now the scalp block involves regional anesthesia to the nerves that innovate the scalp, thus providing analgesia for a considerable period of time after you give the block. <clears throat> So as I said, there are six nerves which are blocked individually on each side. And these are supratrochlear nerve, supraorbital nerve, zygomaticotemporal nerve, and auriculotemporal nerve on the anterior aspect of the scalp, which are all branches from the ophthalmic maxillary and mandibular division of the tribe channel nerve. On the posterior aspect, we will block lesser occipital nerve, greater occipital nerve, and, which are, and also sometimes the great or posterior auricular nerve. So these are the nerves we block when we give scalp block on each side of the scalp. <clears throat> what are the anesthetic agents used? We all know local anesthetic agents like lignocaine, which, which is a short acting one and bupivacaine or rupivacaine, which is a long acting one are being used. Uh, we all, uh, they can be used either without adrenaline or with adrenaline or a vasoconstrictor, which not only increase the duration of uh, <clears throat> the block, but also uh, you can give a higher dose and the toxicity uh, by system reduce systemic tox uh, absorption and thus local anesthesia toxicity. So most of the time, we all find this, uh, uh, what are the pharmacokinetics in an and pharmacodynamics of these drugs in any book. So just to say that lignocaine or map mepivacaine are the fast, fast, have got fast onset and shorter duration, while other three that bupivacaine, uh, levorubivacaine uh, or ropivacaine has got a longer duration. I usually mix short and long acting drug to have achieved the benefit of both the types of uh, local anesthetic drugs that like to achieve speed of onset as well as duration of block is prolonged. Moreover, you can have adjuncts like fentanyl, clonidine, dexamet dexamethasone, dexmetomidine, magnesium sulfate or NSAIDs uh, like per pericoxib, which can add it to these uh, drugs uh, so that you can increase the duration and performance of these blocks. <clears throat> now, coming on to a, a technique per se, uh, you have to prepare the uh, uh, site and uh, for properly for uh, giving the block. So you should have all the uh, like betadine, clorexidine, strelgos, and syringes and drugs ready. And you have to aspirate the drug with all aseptic precautions to avoid any kind of uh, infection at the site. How to prepare? You have to clean the area with chlorexidine or betadine. Uh, on bilaterally on each side, anteriorly as, and posteriorly. Mind it, you should place a style sheet around all over. So uh, style area around should be there. Then you should <coughs> uh, paint the area with the betadine. I completely on both sides, right up to the posterior aspect where we are going to give the block. It should be properly uh, uh, painted. <coughs> all the side and after adequate timing when um, to for uh, time to be given for the drug uh, i mean betadine to act and after that for say three to five minutes when it's assigned then you clean it with the spirit 
yeah so that the area is now ready for giving the block <clears throat> so what are the nerves we block supra orbital nerve and supra trochlear nerve these are blocked on the entry aspect and these are the nerves let me see how let us see how we go first of all we find the landmark landmark for this is the supra orbital notch or supra orbital foramen which can be palpated on the superior margin of the orbit somewhere between the medial one third and lateral two third <clears throat> From through this foramen, we have uh, comes out the supraorbital nerve uh, along with the supraorbital vessel. And medial to it, around one centimeter medial to it, we have the supratrochlear nerve and vessel. So let's see how we block. We first palpate the superior border of the <coughs> superior margin of the orbit. Then, after finding locating the supraorbital notch, we will infiltrate the area with the drug, one to two ml of the drug, is right at the supraorbital notch or foramen. You have to make sure that you aspirate before you insert, uh, give the drug because it is accompanied by the vessels, supraorbital vessels. And make sure that you have a finger uh, below it to guide that you do not go into the globe, the eye. Some, some, there have been reports where uh, eye has been punctured because of the <coughs> uh, because of the I'm sorry this some uh, this just a minute <coughs> is there any uh, I've lost my hello Hello. Hi. You're audible, uh, Dr. Singh. You're audible. Just now my slides are... The slide is not moving. Just a minute. Um, I'll just check it. Maybe I have to share it again. <coughs> I'll share the slides again. <coughs> what has happened? I'm so sorry for this glitch. Ma'am, I uh, do I need to join it again? Let me just stop my things and come back. From I think there is some issues with. The, <clears throat> I'm not able to view my slides here. <clears throat> yeah, is it visible, ma'am? I think you need to join, rejoin, and share the slide. Yeah, yeah. Is it visible now, sir? Slides are not visible. Not visible. Okay, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, has it now become visible now? Yeah. Now it is visible, but not in full screen mode. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm just coming up. So <clears throat> this, uh, I'm very sorry for that glitch, some issues. So uh, we have to palpate for the supraorbital notch. And then... <clears throat> I'm not sure I understand. We are giving this block here. Make sure that you are not injecting into the orbit. Uh, so I have to keep a finger below it. Now, after aspiration, you have to give one to two ml of the drug. <clears throat> and from the same side, you can also uh, uh, go medially with the, uh, and block the supratrochlear nerve from the same side. So this is one way of blocking the supratrochlear and supraorbital nerve. Or sometimes if you can also give a separate block about one centimeter medial to the 
supraorbital nerve, you can break, give the block <coughs> here for the supratrochlear nerve. So this is how you give the block of the supraorbital and supratrochlear nerve. Similarly, you are going to repeat the block on the opposite end. Right? So I'll move to the next slide now. <coughs> the uh, next nerve which we block is the zygomaticotemporal nerve. Zygomaticotemporal nerve is a branch from the maxillary division of the uh, trigeminal nerve. This is the nerve which we are going to uh, block. So we will first <clears throat> locate the uh, zygomatic arch and about one centimeter above the zygomatic arch pointing towards the lateral border of the orbit, we are going to inject about one to two ml of the drug. Remember, we are going to inject in a fan-shaped uh, manner and also we are going to give deep, go deep and inject one cc of drug below a deeper aspect because this uh, has got a superficial and deep branch and if we do not block both the branch the there can be some amount of pain to the patient <clears throat> next we, the nerve which we block is the auriculotemporal nerve auriculotemporal nerve is a nerve which is a branch of the mandibular nerve and which is can be located in front of the tragus of the ear so if you see this is the area where you can see that uh, nerve along with the superficial temporal artery. So you palpate for the superficial temporal artery in front of the tragus of the ear. <clears throat> and after the palpation, you have to make sure that you can palpate the artery very well. And you have to keep that artery below your finger so that you do not inject into the vessel. If you happen to inject into the vessel, what will happen is that you can have a toxicity of the local anesthetic. So after you have located the vessel very well under your finger, then you will inject around one to two cc of the drug right by the side of the vessel after aspiration. <clears throat> yes, after negative aspiration. And while you inject also, you should keep on aspirating so that the, there is no chance of injecting into the vessel. So similarly, you are going to repeat on the opposite side. Next nerve which we block is the great or posterior auricular nerve, which is a small nerve uh, supplied, supplying the uh, area behind the pinna of the ear. So now this nerve can be blocked by palpating the mastoid process. So if we palpate the mastoid process and just about one centimeter above the tip of the mastoid process, we will inject around one to two cc of the drug and block the vessel the nerve. So here we will inject around one to two cc of the drug and you can see the wheel being raised because of the infiltration and this can be done in a fan-shaped manner to avoid any twig which can remain unblocked. So this is how we block the nerve. <clears throat> Similarly, we are going to repeat the block on the other side, on one side and then to the other side. So anyway, uh, you can see we are palpating for the tip of the mastoid process. Then above it, around one centimeter above it, we will infiltrate with around one to two centimeter of the drug here. <laughs> Next. Next nerve which we block is the lesser occipital nerve and the greater occipital nerve. Greater, both are the branches of the spinal, uh, cervical spinal nerve. So these lesser and greater occipital nerve can can be uh, <coughs> palpated or can be blocked by, uh, you have to, the landmarks are, you have to file for the external occipital protuberance and the mastoid process. Lining, line joining these two points, if you divide it into three, the lateral one third and middle one third, the junction of lateral one, middle one third, uh, medial two third, you can say, the junction of the lateral one third and medial two third, that at this point, uh, this is the site where you block the, lesser occipital nerve and the greater occipital nerve can be blocked at the junction with at the point which is the junction of the medial and middle one third. So if you divide into three areas, so lateral one third and middle one third junction is the later, lesser occipital nerve and middle one third and medial one third, uh, the junction of that, that is a greater occipital nerve. 
remember the greater occipital uh, <coughs> vessel, no, sorry, artery uh, nerve is accompanied by greater occipital artery, and you can give the drug inadvertently to intuit, and that can cause toxicity. So always feel for the vessel uh, with your finger before injecting, and make sure you aspirate before you inject. And you can give in a fan-shaped manner so that you can block the. <coughs> okay, so this is we are giving on the opposite end. Let's uh, similarly we are going for the gate hospital now. Now, what to be careful about? See, in a in intravascular injection or systemic absorption. <coughs> this is a common uh, uh, complication which can happen because of adrenaline. They can, if you are using a local anesthesia with adrenaline, you can have hypertension, tachycardia, and other hemodynamic changes. Or if the there is a, uh, in a, uh, if it goes into the vessel, there can be local anesthesia toxicity. So you have to be very careful about that. Overdose of the drug should be avoided at any cost. And uh, you know there are some newer drugs which are more safer. So you, if they are available, like ropivacaine or levobupivacaine, they can be used, which are less cardiac, cardiac neurotoxic. Infection can be a concern, and so strict sterility should be maintained. In hematoma can be another concern, especially in patients. <clears throat> Uh, uh, who have bleeding disorder. So you should be careful about it, especially when injecting into the, and should not inject into the vessels. And other complications can be swelling of the upper eyelid, ecmosis, globe injury has been reported, allergic reaction can occur, and inadequate anesthesia where you do not have the adequate effect. So uh, next is, <coughs> where, where do we need a scalp block? Yes, for any crane awake anatomy, this is the cornerstone. A scalp block is a cornerstone, and you have to have a very good uh, scalp block for to um, do this procedure. Another area where it can be used is chronic pain syndromes of head and neck, like cluster headaches, occipital neuralgia, migraines, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There can be scalp procedures which can be done, like wound laceration repair, upper end of shunt repair, omaya placement, IC placement, etc. Then you have and you can use it in patients who have been. Uh, who have undergone keratomy under genesis yeah, because for an analgesic effect it will blunt the hemodynamic response reduce the intraoperative and uh, analgesic and anesthetic requirement thereby facilitate early post operative awakening and neurological assessment moreover it will reduce the post operative pain both acute and persistent and will decrease the post operative requirement of analgesia so take home messages classic scalp infiltration technique has now been replaced and the newer technique have involved which are called scalp nerve block, where you target the individual nerve blocks. These are useful in intraoperative and postoperative pain management, useful in perioperative management of patient where they by provide better hemodynamic stability, decrease anesthetic and analgesic requirement and improve pain score in patients. Scalp blocks are technique are quite safe, can be used in children and are, have a very steep learning curve, can be learned very easily. They are ha having growing interest, in, people having growing interest into this now blocks and are likely to see wider use in future also. So with that, I thank you for, uh, thank you. And before I end, I just want to uh, uh, inform everyone that our department is organizing the third annual conference of New Critical Care Society of India, uh, along with AIMS New Anesthesia Update in 2022 which is being uh, uh, which will be from 6th of october to 9th of october at ames new delhi and i cordially invite all the members of SNAC to please come and be a part of this event thank you thank you so much thank you